Hello to everybody in the YouTube world. Today we're going to be doing a build diary for my Rise Respect Your Elders QT character. This is going to be a Spell Slinger character that I then will use to play Corrupting Fever on Solo Cell Phone Hardcore once eventually, hopefully, I'm going to find an Empower. But until then, it is a Spell Slinger and... This isn't a build that people haven't played before, although for Hardcore specifically, it somehow has fallen out of grace. But I believe that with the recent changes to armor and with the amount of max resistances that you can get, it's still a pretty solid option. When it comes to clear speed, it's super fast. Arena Challenger is just very, very strong, paired up with Onslaught and high movement speed boots is very, very good. And then obviously, the standard Gladiator pops uh, result in some pretty juicy clearage. Our main attack is going to be Kinetic Blast, and the primary reason for that is that it hits an insane amount of times if you support it with something like greater multiple projectiles, pierce, and then unfortunately you have to use life tab, but maybe you can use something like maim uh, instead of pierce, and then you can use something like poacher's aim. I find that for the lower level maps, as this character is only level 78 so far, um, I've had way better results with just using Pierce, and if you're seeing the footage, uh, you can probably tell why. It's just much more effective. And obviously, you don't have to give up something like the jewel slot. So in the last gauntlet, I played a Spell Slinger build that was pretty much the exact same idea, right? We use Reap for our single target, we use Exsanguinate with Chain for the clear, and then we also use Corrupting Fever, which again, synergizes extremely well with the Kinetic Blast, but in the Gauntlet from the last season, I played that as a Scion, and I really like Scion if you're really going to be focusing a lot on purely the Spell Singer setup. However, for Hardcore, I think it's not as good because the uh, Termination is a problem, and that's why I want to switch to a purely Corrupting Fever build. But if you are interested in a transitional build, this might have some valuable information for you as to how you can do something like that. Because as much as Scion is very strong when it comes to leveling uh, a build such as this one, because you immediately have access to all the super valuable uh, damage over time nodes and all of the uh, sovereignty increases to the mana reservation efficiency, um, with Gladiator, you don't. Initially, the way you play Gladiator, you're gonna have to use Lancing skills. Uh, you don't really have to invest into any damage nodes. I just used Vendor Crafted Weapons, and I picked up Destroyer, and honestly, it was more than enough. It made for super nice clear speed, and then once I got to Library, since I didn't have another character, I immediately switched to Spell Slinger. However, do keep in mind that, specifically when it comes to the Gladiator versus something like the Scion, uh, your Exsanguinate is going to be level 1. That's pretty painful. You do have access to Corrupting Fever, but uh, it alone is not enough to carry, and you do need to be level 28 to be able to use Reap. So, Rush Library, uh, get your Reap, switch to Spell Slinger, and if you don't have enough mana, if you have a Tabula or whatever, maybe you have a four, 5 link somehow, uh, you know, you don't have to be using all the support gems. It's super easy to fill it out. And honestly, it makes for one of the better levelers, I think, when it comes to any league start. Again, in the last season, I had a lot of success with Scion. And a lot of people did extremely well with those early Lancing skill leveling trees as well. So I can fully anticipate that if you're just league starting right now, it should be more than good enough for your case. When it comes to the gear, I can only really elaborate on the basics so far as I don't have anything particularly crazy when it comes to your wand. You want to be crafting it with fear essences uh, if you have access to them. Unfortunately, I didn't end up getting uh, the right wand, but the way you want to do it is that you want to get a level 2 wand. The way you access a level 2 wand is you level a character to town, so that character will then be level 2. Um, which then means the vendors will sell level 3 gear. But you don't want level 3 gear because that increases the amount of affixes that can roll on your item. And really, with the Fear Essence, you already have the prefix that you want, right? The spell damage that you want. But it's a global effect because of Spiritual Aid. And what you're really fishing for is an open suffix and plus one to physical 
gems. So, to do that, you're going to have to de-level. The way you de-level is you get a wisdom scroll and you get a scour and you sell it to a vendor. It sells you a book of regression, which then de-levels your character back to level one, resets your vendors, and then makes it so that you can buy a level two wands and hopefully get something a little bit better uh, than mine. If you don't have fear essences, if you don't want to worry about it, you can end up with a, with a wand such as this. It's not particularly good, but so far it's been doing the job for me. Overall, we're going to be focusing on armor gear realistically. You want as much HP and armor as possible as it's extremely valuable. Even with my wonky gear, I have about 11k armor. Now, flask active with flask active, that's 22k, which pretty much when it comes to old armor, it's about 44k armor. On top of that, obviously, your molten shell is going to be present in situations usually uh, when you're about to die, so that's going to give you extra armor on top of giving you an even bigger buff. My shield is Anne's Heritage. I'm just going for the max resistances. You can really use anything with this, you can make it so that. Uh, you have Frenzy Charges if you want to go for the Onslaught. I found that specifically Onslaught is super valuable for this build. And I haven't been particularly happy with uh, what I have on my boots, which is the 10% chance to gain Onslaught for 4 seconds on kill. And instead, I would highly recommend that you use a, a Death Rush. Uh, this gives you Onslaught anytime you kill, so it's pretty much always present. And you don't really care about your attack speed or your movement speed. On bosses i mean obviously it helps but it's more than enough since you have a very consistent amount of arena challenger uh charges rings get hp get resistances chest piece four link will totally do five link is a little bit better but as you can tell my mana efficiency is a little bit wonky because i'm using champion of the cause i haven't yet picked up sovereignty as this character is level 78 and honestly, it's more or less the same thing on everything else. Again, you want to get armor, resistances, cover your stats, because uh, one of the big problems that this build most definitely has is uh, the amount of intelligence that you have access to. Dexterity is a little bit of a problem, but not nearly as much. But yeah, you don't pick up a whole lot of intelligence on the skill tree. Eventually, I'll have a little bit more from picking up attribution and sanctity. But until then... Uh, that's been one of the headaches, you know, and since we, this is a build diary, we're discussing some of the issues that you might run into uh, personally. Don't be afraid either way to pick up something like ancestral knowledge or expertise or even these notes down here is one of the big reasons why path through here outside of just an early champion of the cause as eventually I'll be traveling through here and no longer will have access to these notes as I value Juggernaut so highly. And also another thing that people have been really sleeping on this league, I think, is flasks, you know? Everybody kind of grew used to the fact that uh, last league's flasks weren't really what you wanted them to be. Uh, but this league, flasks are really freaking good. You still want to get that torties with tortoise, tor tor turtle, it's a turtle, uh, which used to be the old iron skin on your granite. Uh, currently, there's a couple ways to get freeze immunity. Honestly... You can get freeze immunity, but I've just been running the uh, immunity to freeze and chill during flask effect on a random flask uh, with used when you become frozen, and it's been doing wonders for me. My flasks never really run out. I never really get frozen. I do use immunity to bleeding and corrupting blood during flask effect. So again, we mentioned the regeneration, and I feel like not that many things puncture you. And you can most definitely, and you should, get Corrupted Blood cannot be inflicted on you on this mastery. It's absolutely worth one point. But so far, this flash has been working out for me. You shouldn't immediately die to something that punctures you. But you might, you know, vulnerability causes you to not only take increased damage, but also uh, gives mobs a chance to, to puncture you for a significant amount of damage. Um, expedition mobs puncture pretty heavily. Uh, I think maybe some of the new Scourge mobs might puncture you pretty nicely as well. So do keep that in mind. It's not a big focus, but that flask has been doing a lot of work for me. And then, again, temporarily I've been using the freeze removal. I've had some chill removal. And then when it comes to your warding, that's, I would say, probably the biggest issue when it comes to this build. It's curses. While it is super easy to overcap uh, your resistances for any of the elemental curses 
Uh, you only really need like 20 resistances for red maps now uh, to not have a problem with that. Again, vulnerability is a pretty huge issue. You can either get that on a flask such as this one, as you can't get curse immunity on your flask anymore. You can only get decreased effect, and unfortunately, it's also not craftable with beasts. Uh, you can get it here, and most of the time, you're not going to be getting cursed like over and over. Uh, so that helps a lot. If you really want to go with the high investment approach, uh, you can maybe change your pantheon to reduction, which I wouldn't recommend. You can get reduced curse effect on your rings. It, they don't have to be influenced rings. You can actually craft them now as a suffix up to 25. So if you have a 50% reduced curse effect flask, which really doesn't have a downside uh, anymore because you can see the flasks that grant you immunity have the downside of also granting you less duration. However, the flasks that grant you reduced effect of something don't have a downside. So that's pretty cool. And then you can get 25 reduced effect on both of your rings. I think that is the end game solution for a build such as this one. But I haven't quite gotten there yet because as you can see, my gear is super duper random. Uh, I'm never really in danger at all. But if you do want to prevent yourself from being frozen, 100% pick up Soul of the Brine King, uh, get the Cannot Be Frozen, you can maybe save yourself a point on Unwavering Stance uh, in that sort of situation. It's super effective. On top of that, you do get the 50% reduced effect of Chill, which is very valuable because we also pick up Soul of Gurkan, which is 60% reduced effect of Shock. And if you have an open suffix on your gloves in that situation, you can then... Craft 40% reduced effect of chill and shock on you, which will grant you uh, being unaffected by shock. And this includes shocked ground, which is a very neat change from GGG. I believe it also includes chilled ground, because previously, if you had a reduced effect, you would still be affected by the ground effect. And while now you are still affected, you are no longer receiving increased damage, while previously you still would. So a great change from them, and this way you can really protect yourself. You will have 90% uh, chill effect, but honestly, that's more than good enough. When it comes to the immunity to bleeds, this build gets a pretty good amount of life regeneration. I gotta say, I mean, my character only has 5.8k life, and I have 775 regeneration. Eventually, maybe I'll be able to even incorporate something like Vitality if I do not end up using a six link. I am using a banner. I prioritize the banner just because it's such high value, even though technically I got my last character killed. Um, but you can always pick up the Vitality has 100% increased mana reservation efficiency. But yeah, you can see that yet. despite everything, my, mana rec my life recovery is really really good and that's also what i would recommend you get on gear on top of that it's the fact that previously you couldn't really gear around uh any amount of regeneration but now you can get flat regeneration of a substantial amount uh, most of your gear pieces can get up to like 100 i think your chest piece can get like 140 flat regeneration and then your helmet gloves and boots can get regeneration rate I currently have 16% uh, on my helmet, and you can see that's a tier 3 modifier. So pretty freaking good. If you want more sustain, if you want more region, if really you're playing any build that's uh, damage over time oriented, you don't have access to leech, uh, you don't even have access to a whole lot of regeneration on your skill tree, keep in mind that you can do it through gear for those armor builds or armor hybrid builds. It has proven to be super effective for me. Things that also get brought up constantly, and this is honestly one of the trickier parts, is what do you do with your ascendancy? I would say, normal lab, blood in the eyes. Cruel lab, fictitious violence. Then you can take arena challenger. However, keep in mind that we don't have a stance. And by default, you are in blood stance. In the case of arena challenger, this means that 25% chance to gain a challenger charge when you hit a rare or unique enemy while in blood stance. To anybody that doesn't know, these challenger charges give you 2% more attack and movement speed per charge with a 10 charge maximum. That's 20% 
more attack and movement speed. However, while you're in the story, you don't meet that many rare mobs. Uh, obviously, on bosses, we're hitting a million times, right? We're hitting with our reap. Uh, more often than not, you're hitting a multitude of times with your kinetic blast, especially if something has adds or is standing under a target. We're also hitting with our exsanguinate. Uh, we have resolute techniques, so we're always hitting with those attacks as well. Yeah, you're always going to have charges, but while you're in the story, you don't really see that many rare mobs. And therefore, this node will only really be super effective in maps. And that's really when you want it to be effective too, when you're going for the mega clear speed. And then when it comes to your Uber Lab, you have options. You can take Pain Forged, which I would recommend initially, because Outmatch and Outlast, we don't really have a very good way of proccing this. So Outmatch and Outlast gives us 25% chance uh, to gain a Frenzy Charge on kill with the main hand. And that is very important because the only kills that we get with our main hand is our Kinetic Blast, which unfortunately deals literally zero damage. So, we need something to back this up. That's either going to be some form of a Redeemer chest piece. Um, so that you have Frenzy Charges on hit. You can use Blood Rage if you want to get those Frenzy Charges while clearing. Obviously, attack speed is important. Frenzy Charges give you more damage that uh, affects all forms of your damage. And then 10% more physical damage while at maximum Frenzy Charges gives you so much damage for your explosions and all of the other effects. It, it comes at a... It's pretty big value. And then even when it comes to the 25% chance to gain an Endurance Charge on kill with offhand, we don't use an offhand. However, if we do have Endurance Charges, it's also 10% reduced physical damage taken while at maximum Endurance Charges. And while I currently don't have a whole lot of block and I don't really want Endurance Charges because of my Ant's Heritage, I prefer to go for the maximum resistances, you can use a bunch of different nodes uh, to do so either by picking them up or anointing this disciple of unyielding for some on kill usage that we were discussing earlier uh i believe people also pointed to deflection which has 25 percent chance to get an endurance charge when you block there is also inoxorable which is 25 percent chance to get an endurance charge when you are hit which keep in mind even if you are blocking it does count as you getting hit and there's also Aggressive Bastion, which is 10% chance to gain an Endurance Charge on kill while holding a shield. These won't be present during boss fights, so I would personally recommend something like this. It's also pretty nearby, so you can pick it up, and we value armor pretty highly. But, I mean, any of these options are solid, and it's totally up to you. And then another controversial thing, I suppose, would be how I'm disconnecting from the video game right now. That is very contr- Oh, I crashed! Oh, wow, well, uh, yeah. A controversial thing that I did was my bandits. That's not something somebody expected. I helped Oak uh, because I value 1% regen as a singular passive. That's paired up with 20% physical damage, which, in my opinion, that's worth a passive as well. And then there's also 2% reduced physical damage taken, which is pretty all right. So across the board, if you combine that, would you say that Oak for this build is worth two passives? Well, sort of. Um, <laughs> I still think that, uh, in my case specifically, because my gear is so wonky, it isn't worth it right now, but eventually your gear will be better, eventually your character is going to be better, and having the freedom of investing the, those passives later on once your character is like, yeah, level 92, 93, 94, is probably more valuable. But until then, if you want to pick up Oak, Go for it. I'm a huge fan of sustain, and it's been working out well for me, and my global increased physical damage has been super valued too. And who knows, maybe if at some point I drop low, I can admit that the 2% physical damage reduction saved my life somehow. I don't think that's actually going to be the case, but uh, who knows, it might happen. But yeah, I think that's pretty much it for the build diary. Uh, if you guys are interested, I'm sure there's also plenty of content creators that are doing, not on Hardcore, which is one of the main reasons why I, I rolled this build, but for Softcore, there's plenty of content creators that are making those actual Corrupting Fever bow builds that I would like to play eventually, and when it comes to spell slinging, I'm sure you guys can find some sort of, like, end gamey setup as well. Uh, I will end up continuing the character, hopefully, once I do get the empower, so keep your eyes out on that. Uh, it might result in another build diary or another build guide. Uh, until then this is it from me so thank you for watching and see you guys in the next one bye